So I have to go to Rena's Rise. We're trying to make Rena rise. Rise Son of Rome? Uh, no, Rise of Skywalker. Has there ever been a game, by the way, like Rise Son of Rome that we were looking forward to and then just never cared about when it came out? Oh, uh, what? i have Who's this we business <laughs> Sorry, of Rise, I, Son of Rome? You're a big Rise, Son of Rome fan. A huge obviously. fan. <laughs> Why are you calling yourself fat? <laughs> Person of size, actually. Sorry, I didn't... Yeah, P-O-S. That also stands for piece of shit, <laughs> so, by the way. Well, is there a coincidence in that? I don't know. I, I think not. Where was I at on my favorite games list? Uh, I will never get done with this. What was your last one? Uh, or, I think... Sorry, what? Name me some of your games. Uh, GTA V, Mario Kart 8 that. Deluxe, yep. Sonic Mania. Yep. Okay. Well, we're on Fable 2. Oh, I have I have not heard that one yet. Fable 2 is an amazing game. I think it improves on Fable in just about every way. It's a Western RPG game. It has a lot of JRPG elements to it. There's so many different secrets in it. Is, like, John Wayne in it as Western? Sadly, no. Oh. Um... He's not there to say racist things like Got he it. was known for doing. At least according to the internet now. Uh, people hate him now. I know. But anyways, no, yeah, I love that game very, very much. I think that it expanded on the world of Albion, which is the world in Fable as well. And I'm not saying it's like, you know, sitting up there with like Tolkien works in terms of its lore, but it actually does have a surprisingly deep and well-written lore for what it is. And I really like the aesthetic of it, too, and it's very Mm England-based. So, like, it's very, very obviously themed after the United Kingdom, which I do think makes it kind of unique in that way, especially for an RPG. And on top of all of that, obviously, I just think it has really fun gameplay. And it introduced guns to Fable, because I think it takes place four or five hundred years after Fable 1. Okay. And there is more technology, but it still feels like the same world and makes sense. So it's it's like a natural progression of Fable, which frustrates me, because Fable 3 is a big step down from Fable 2. So, Fable 2 is like the one step up in the series, in my opinion. Everything's bigger, and not just bigger, but better. Like cock sizes? Yes, exactly. Got it. Well, and even, like, the romances in it are better, where you can start your own family in it if you want to, and meet all kinds of people, and it really seems like it took its premise seriously and tried to deliver on stuff that the first game didn't. Now, the Fable... Oh. That's cool. The the Fable games are known for over-promising features, which is a shame, because I think that their reputation got hurt by that where Peter Molyneux, the guy who was originally making them, kind of, like, over-promised what they could do, which is a shame. But I think that they're really, really, really great. Also, I like how this is just a doll. It's like an Annabelle doll. Yeah. Huh. Well, there must be a quest with it, but... Yeah, well, we're doing Ronnie's quest. Did you miss the other items back there, or did you get them? I got an item. Oh. I bet the... Never mind. I think I was looking at a flower. Ignore me. Oh, okay. that's a grace point. So anyways, yeah. Fable 2. Yeah, Fable 2. Um, I do have one more thing to say about okay, it. Did well, you have a question? No, I did not. Okay, well, I thought you were going to ask me something. You just don't care about this one? I, I'm going to be honest. I know, like, next to nothing about Fable. Oh, talk to Minnie oh. Girani. Is that it? Oh. 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 A dogged fellow, aren't we? Or is it merely thy habit to talk to dolls? Fine. Fine. I hadn't expected any soul to recognize me in this guise. But now the cat is out the bag. I cannot allow thee thy freedoms. Perform for me a service as recompense. Eliminate the baleful shadows which prowl these lands. The name of Rani the Witch is already sullied by thee. I will not brook disobedience in this matter. Oh, we can talk to Rani, too. Try it. Perform for me a service as recomp- Eliminate the baleful shadows which prowl these lands. The name of Rani the Witch is already I will not How would our- How would we have sullied her name? We've literally been helping her. The I entire way through. I guess it's not good enough. It's literally just like a woman. <clears throat> like, we go through all this freaking effort and do everything that she says to do, 
But it's like, no, 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 that's not good enough. You got, you got to do more. <laughs> you ruined my name. Well, I think I increased our amount that we get healed by. Uh, sorry, I just had PTSD flashbacks <laughs> during that. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to say also one thing that I really respect about Fable 2. Now, this is just a side thing. Is it's one of the few games I can think of where it actually, if I'm remembering right, puts all of its DLC content on the complete disc. Wow. So when you get the actual disc, they actually put the content on it. So it's not in like the a base game, and then there's the game of the year edition type thing. It's no, just, no, 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 no. It's no. just it all is... in the base game. No, no, no. It, it's a game of the year. Oh god. But I'm saying most game of the years don't put all their content in the game of the year. Anymore. Yeah. Like most games now don't even do that. They just make you. I don't know. Well, they they have like a code. Yes, exactly. Actually, now that I'm saying this, I'm gonna grab this game really quick from the shelf because I have it. I just want to make sure I'm not full of crap on that. Maybe there is a code. If there is, I it's not on my list anymore. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, okay. So there is a sheet. But that sheet is not a code. It's it's on the disc. Okay. The sheet just talks about what you can do. You would have lost all credibility as a gamer if you if you had been wrong there. I know. Fable 2 stands everywhere would be at my door. I'm already at your door. All five of them that aren't me. <laughs> <sighs> but I can move on. I'm making good progress. You are making good progress. The next one I have is... Crap, I messed up my order. Fable 2 is the last uh, one. The next one I have is Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is, to me, the perfect blend of action Resident Evil and survival horror. You actually still have all these puzzles, you still have all this stuff you have to solve, you still essentially have the core elements of what make a Resident Evil game Resident Evil, but it also is a little more action-y. And I thought that they did a really good job expanding on Leon. He's the Whoa. main character from... Oh my gosh, that is actually kind of terrifying. The heck is... I think that's one of the things we have to kill. Huh. That is horrifying. It looks like something out of Bloodborne. Um, the... Wait, I have an idea. Okay. What if What if we go back to the round table and level up the uh, the Mimic guy? The Mimic guy? Oh, the Mimic tier? Yeah. Or you could try this. How do you zoom in? I thought it was L1. No. Maybe it's R1. Oh, there we go. What was it? It was L1. Uh-oh. You don't have any error? Oh, you do. So, I was going to say, with this game, though, and I actually, for a second, literally forgot what I was talking about, like an absolute idiot... I think that this is kind of where Resident Evil started to hit its problems. Like, for some people this was too action-y, for other people it wasn't. For me it was the perfect blend, but then they start going more and more and more action. Right. And, I don't know, I, I think that works with, uh, I think that that does work Jeez. when you're looking at movies, right? Like, you can transition to more action-based movies, but when you're talking about a game where one of the fundamental experiences is the gameplay that can really divide the player base and that's literally exactly what it did it, it Resident Evil 5 and 6 they kind of made it so a ton of people left the series and now I know 7 and 8 are good games but to me they're very very different than classic Resident Evil being you know first person and all this stuff and I thought that 4, it kind of ushered in this era of, like, a fun mixture, especially when you look at things like Resident Evil Revelations. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's really the game that keeps being ported and brought back to everything else. Like, there's a reason why people love it. It just works very, very well in terms Jeez. of its game. It could still hit me from over here? Apparently. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> Right. But yeah, I don't know. I, we should probably just grab those souls and then let's go back to the round table for a few minutes. But I love that game in general. Also, Leon is like my favorite playable Resident Evil character. Yeah, that's the one with Leon and Jill, right? No, actually. Oh, not uh, Jill. It's just Leon. Oh, just Leon. Okay. Jill is in a few of them, though. She's in uh, one. She's in three. Okay. Then she's in Revelations. I mean, she shows up in some games, too, as not playable, but she's just there. 
Yeah. But yeah, those are basically the Jill games. Um, <clears throat> the next one I want to talk about was Batman Arkham Asylum. I feel like I've covered this a billion times, so there's only so much I can say about it, but it has, like, the most comic book aesthetic out of most games I've ever played. Press R3. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, and that's down there on the left. I think that it does a really good job of respecting its source material, and it draws on the DCAU very, very well, while also making its own continuity, and... It has, like, such a good claustrophobic atmosphere for Batman where there's mm. actual risk to the encounters that you get into. Wow. Well, and I just love it for those reasons and a lot of the reasons I've talked about on the channel. That's why I don't think it's worth talking about a ton. But one thing I really, really... Oh, you could do the staff. One thing I really... It's over, too. One thing I really like about it, too, is that it just feels very grounded and I think that it helped bring the superhero games back to popularity in terms of its combat where it it changed things it's not with him by the way uh, it changed things so that you don't just feel like they're button mashers right which I really liked it's with her oh god okay. I didn't know hey, if you remembered so I didn't yeah, it's stupid so that's that Oh. oh. I guess we only do it once. I guess we need Ghost Glove War 2. Okay. Well, that's going to be useful still. Do you want to talk to anyone else while we're here? Uh, no, let's go fight that monster thing. Alright. Yeah, I don't know. I, that game... I understand why it's like a lot of people's least favorite Arkham game, too, because of the gameplay, but I just thought that the way that it does it... Which one it was. ...is uh, very interesting. Oh, okay. So there. Yes. It. Yeah, it's um I think besides Arkham Knight, because despite the problems with the Batmobile in that game, I always loved Arkham Knight. Um it's probably my favorite one. Arkham Asylum, I think, is my second favorite Arkham game. Um I don't know, it was just so fun. Like everything down everything down to just the music that plays. Or even like the sound effects mm -hmm. as you're going through it, you really feel like you are actually in the asylum. And I thought it did a really good job making you feel like that. Like it, it, it had that perfect blend of like horror slash thriller kind of a style of game. It had that perfect blend of of having there be stakes to what you do and stakes to the world. Um, you really kind of felt like you were actually Batman immersed in Arkham Asylum if Joker let everyone out. Right. Like, it really had that good feel of, like, this is pretty scary and intense. Yeah, it did horror stuff, like you said, very well. It was very... I think it's one of the most atmospheric games in the franchise. Yeah. I mean, it really does kind of confine you to that setting, and you don't feel like you're a god either. Right. You kind of feel like you absolutely can be killed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's something I wish they had brought back. Yeah, I agree. I the, mean, I know they expanded the scope, but... Yeah, the scene with... Um, I'm going to summon this guy. What guy? My dude. Oh, oh. Sorry, I, th I was confused. Wait, that took half my life. Yeah, but you can just heal. Good point. You can just... There we go. <clears throat> You're. Why don't you just charge that thing? Let's okay. see what it's capable of. Because we don't want it to just kill the mimic tier anyway. Yeah, I thought that um, it, all, it had the only time in the franchise where I've actually jumped. Oh, really? What was it? The Scarecrow? Yeah, the first time you had Scarecrow and he was in like the body bag. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing that one time. My parents were out of town and I had all the lights off because I was just gaming. And I played that and I'm not kidding you. I actually like freaked out. <laughs> Try shooting it with magic. Yeah, that was actually really scary. They they did a really good job with that, and there was more horror than what? just that, too. Like, the stuff with Gordon and the stuff with Barbara. Yeah, there's so many cool things in that. Okay, these guys... Okay. That was the worst time for me to ever go out then. That's okay. Your uh, mimic tier is actually uh, distracting that big guy. Oh, jeez. The big just... it? No, not John Big Odd. Okay, then.
Okay, we got those two guys out of the way. I got him! I got him! Nice! Okay, somber stone, somber smithing stone, level 7. I was going to continue okay. my journey. Like, don't stop believing journey? Uh, who are they? Uh, not a very good band. <laughs> Got it, okay. Eminem who? <laughs> so oh, the next geez. one I have is actually, uh, we're getting down to the bottom here. It, it, well, okay. I don't know. I don't know about this one. Okay. I'm kind of questioning my placement of this game. Uh oh. It's Dark Souls 2. Oh, well, what, what number are we at? Ah, oh, jeez. Well. This is the 26th one. Okay. I'm trying to go through these quicker. Yeah. Because I kind of realized that I'm not going to be able to make a video off of this, probably, because it's spread out way too much. Mm -hmm. So now I feel like I don't have to be as in-depth on every explanation. That makes sense. Um, but Dark Souls 2, I think, is not as good as any other Dark Souls game that I can think of. I've never fully played 3. Mm -hmm. I just haven't had time. But the thing with Dark Souls 2 is that I think it's really, really... Oh, nice. We need those. I think that it's really, really well done still for a RPG game. Make sure you grab those glove wards too. And I think that I love the, I love a lot of the lore in it. I know people say like, well, it's the least intentional lore. It's like, yes, I understand Miyazaki wasn't as involved. I agree with you. But the thing is, it's still so good for what it is, where you have the lore with the war between Vendrick and the giants and all this other stuff with Drang Laic, and you have all these very interesting characters that you can meet, you're gonna die. Get out of there. Um, and all these very interesting like plot lines and NPCs and stuff like that. And I think that the, it's one of the games I can think of where it actually had better DLC than Dark Souls 1. Like Dark Souls 1's DLC is more iconic because you fight Artorias and Manus and everything. So I'm not saying it's not more iconic, but Dark Souls 2 really took the idea of, like, DLC, and it made it a full thing. Like, hours and hours of content and bosses and areas that are interesting to explore. Right. Uh, some of the DLC is even better than a lot of parts of the base game. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how good it is. And I think that because the DLC is part of the complete package, that always really impressed me. It always felt like when you're playing Scholar of the First Sin at least, with all the DLC and everything. It's very, very much a game that... That is creepy. What? What's creepy? Well, look, it's like eyes and it looks like a shadow. Oh, what is that? Can you go up to I it? I don't know. I, that's why I was, like, looking above me. Like, is there something on the ceiling that's gonna, like, drop down? I don't think so. Okay, anyways, you're what, saying... Are those items, or what are they? Yeah. Are items? Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's a very complete Souls experience. Right. And I really like it because of that. But I think that it certainly suffered from Miyazaki's lack of involvement, which is frustrating. And it, I kind of wonder how much better it could have been if, like, they hadn't basically lied, in my opinion, about the lighting system. And if they hadn't um, frustrated everyone with their decision making. And if they had involved Miyazaki more, like if he hadn't been making Bloodborne at the time and instead he had just been making that, it just makes me wonder how much better would that game be. I think that's why it's not higher on my list. Yeah. Because it sucks to look at a good game, because I, I really do think the Scholar of the First Sin version is a good game, and wish that it was a better game and know it could have been a better game. Like, that's such a frustrating feeling when it comes to Dark Souls 2. Right. So, I don't know. Oh, there's two of them there. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, jeez. What the heck is that? Uh, a disgusting big bug. Okay. First kill that thing. Ew. I hate these. I hate all bugs. 
And for some reason, Miyazaki has, like, some hard-on for bugs. Me too. I mean, yeah, he does. <laughs> Uh, I can't do that anymore. You can do your magic one. You have one more. The cerulean tears. You just keep going by it. Yeah, I just didn't know if I wanted to use it. No, you should use it. Also, people yeah. want us to use the shortcuts, but I, I genuinely have a hard time remembering what direction it is. Yeah. When we do it. What shortcuts are we talking about? I think about? you hold the up arrow or something. Try... Hold the up arrow? Maybe it's the triangle. What was the button you just held? That was up. Okay, try, try holding triangle. So it's that. You can equip a thing right to the shortcut bar and just press it and it'll do it. But for me, I have a hard time remembering where we put them. And when we did it before, I thought there was a path that way too, wasn't there? Yeah, there's two paths. Oh, okay. But I don't know which path does what. This looks like the main path, but I could be full of shit. Um... But then again, it's souls. Like, who knows what the main path is. What's above you? Looks like eggs. Ew! Yeah, I, I don't know. I love souls, but to be honest, I've always hated bugs. Like, always. And I don't know what is with his obsession with the arbitrary bug level. Oh Whoa. my. Like, well, what, like, what is make with... Make sure this is actually an enemy. Well, how do you know? I don't know. I guess you'd have to go up to him. Come on, I want to read. you can lock on to him. <laughs> I want to read the message. You're joining him. You're joining him in his tea posing. <laughs> Be wary of right. Okay. What's on the right? Well, there's that guy. Oh, there's that dude. I don't know, should I backstab him? Maybe. I don't know, because there's also that thing Whoa, down what's there. what's that thing? The things that shoot you with meteors. Oh. I'm gonna backstab this guy. Oh, one hit kill. Okay. Nice. That's shooting. <sighs> okay. It's a bit of a creepy place. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, Alright, what's your next game? <laughs> Uh, your mom's baby photos. Nice. <laughs> now, my next one is... For some reason, my app keeps closing, which is really obnoxious. So I have to open it literally every time that we talk about this. My next game is Fallout 3 Game of the Year. Okay. So I love DC. I love everywhere you can go. I love the RPG elements. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of the history of the game. I think that it is surprisingly really good for it being the Jeez. first 3D Bethesda Fallout game. Should I do this or go in the city? I would do this. Okay. I want to see what's over here. Okay. Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, there's not much to dislike about Fallout 3, except I hate the level cap. You can only level up to level 30. Level 30? Yeah, that's the level cap in that what? game. What? Yep. How long is the game? Because I feel like... Because I'm already at level, like, 13. I'm playing through the game right now. Yeah. And I'm already at, like, 12 or 13. Right, I know. And I They're... feel like I, like, just started the game. <laughs> yep, it's very possible you'll hit the level cap um, almost by the time that you're starting the DLCs, even. Which oh. is annoying, because then you're just at the level cap. So you can't get, like... Did you see the chest? Yeah. So you can't, like, upgrade your stats or anything like that after that? No, but 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 you can find bobbleheads. So here's the thing. If you wait until you have like max stats and then you start finding oh. the bobbleheads like for charisma and other stuff like that, um you can actually get some of those stats up to 11. Oh. In that game. Like you could get 11 charisma for example. Okay. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean this sucks cuz we can't really shoot him. I could try shooting with a comet, but I don't have any... Oh, I do have Cerulean... How do I get two more Cerulean Tears? I don't know. Try shooting him. Let's just get rid of him. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, they fly now! They fly now! They fly now! You should heal. You should heal! You should heal! Ah! Jeez. Play this game like Jill does now. They push through stuff. Well, I didn't... Terrifying. Okay. <laughs> What's up with that item we couldn't get? How were you expected to get up there, anyway? I don't know. So there is an area down there. Maybe up here? Oh. 
Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know. Did you have anything else to say about three? Well, you're playing it right now. Maybe you could talk a little bit more about it because we like it for the same reasons mainly. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm currently playing through the game right now. Um, it's really fun. I guess my only problem, and me and you were talking about this earlier a little bit, is I guess being someone who is not that this is like some dumb flex or something. The last three years of my life been specifically studying about presidential history mm -hmm. and 90 percent of that presidential history takes place in dc right um because that's literally where they live i guess being someone who has immersed himself in that world and the history of the war of that area dc has quickly grown into one of my favorite like areas in the world um and I guess playing... I think I can maybe drop down here, by the way. Yeah, I think you could roll. I guess playing Fallout 3... Oh, crap. You lived. I was, um, I was really excited to get to that game because I love DC so much. And I, I guess my initial thought was um, I'm excited to, to go see this thing. I'm excited to go see that. You know, I started running through all the awesome things in DC. And my main problem is most of that stuff is not even in the game and I kind of felt like it was a little disappointing for me at least now maybe for like the casual this is going to sound rude but the casual like historical person out there they're not going to know a lot of that stuff so it doesn't really mean much to them anyways but for me it's like I look at it and I'm like yeah you can go to the Lincoln Memorial the Jefferson Memorial you can go to like the Capitol and the Washington Monument and the National Archives all those are awesome but for me, it's like this could have been so much better because mm -hmm. there's so many things in D.C. that are not in there. Like just off the top of my head right now, Ford's Theater, literally like a block or two from the White House. That would have been the easiest thing ever to, to put in the game. You know, like why wasn't that in there? Theodore Roosevelt Island. What about like the World War II Memorial? I it mean, all got blown up. Yeah, and, and that seemed like that seemed like that was the excuse was well DC got blown up so we didn't put it in. It's like but so did Boston and yet you put in like really niche things in Boston and Fallout 4 like the Cheers uh bar. Right. I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, that's there. And it's like and I yes, I get this is an older game, so like obviously they perfected world building by the time of four. But I guess I for me, it was just really disappointing because I was really excited to see all this cool stuff in DC. And then I get to the game, and it's kind of like, I like the stuff that's in the game, but where is all the other cool stuff? Mm -hmm. And I guess for someone like me, um, my only real problem with Fallout 3 is that I know how much cooler that, that world could have been for the game. And it's just disappointing to not see all that stuff, you know, and, and, maybe, and here's the thing, maybe that's not my fault, but maybe it's kind of on me for expecting all this stuff in the game and like having weird high expectations, but well, no, it's no. kind of, it, it, it kind of isn't really my fault too, because it's like when you're making and kind of like something you pointed out earlier, when you're making a game that's based on a real world, there's something up there. Oh, I don't think we can get there right now. Sorry. I'm not trying to distract you. It's just there's items everywhere. I keep seeing out of right. my eyes. <laughs> it's like when you're ba when you're making a game that's based on a real world location, I think you do kind of have some obligation to make that world as accurate as possible. Yes. Because there are people in the world that actually know that world. They live there. Maybe they're a big fan of the history of the world. And to be honest, they're going to call you out on your bullcrap. Right, and if you want to make up locations, that's awesome. Like, I love right. the fictional side of it, but I just think when you when you exclude a lot of things that should matter, but then you act like your game really knows the history, because I will say that Fallout, at the very least, the original Fallouts knew the history, and not everything was there either, but as technology advanced, I would have expected it to advance more to the point where more would be there, right? If you want to make stuff up, like UFOs and these companies and all kinds of stuff like that, you're going to get shot by this bubble thing. That, oh, yeah. that kind of stuff I really appreciate. But when you are just going to essentially 
exclude a bunch of things that also mattered to the real world history and you're basing a lot of your alternate history off of real world history that's kind of the point to me where it's like I feel like we should be trying to include more of those things like you said like the Ford theater and stuff like that it's it's frustrating too because there's also some things in the game that I don't understand how they made it and others didn't like a good example of that would be something like um Jeez. The museum? Yeah. Like that maybe? Museum of history, you mean? Yeah, you should shoot them. Yeah. Because your, your shot will pass through multiple. Wrong uh, the museum of history made it, right? And I understand that, but then why didn't... Um, I don't know, why didn't some of the other monuments make it? Right. I'm really bad at this. Do you need help? Like, I can... Well, there's like so many of these people. I can help. Okay. I don't have to. Help. I'm I'm badish at this these things, so. I don't have to help. I was just offering. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm. I was happy that was in the game because the Smithsonian is a very because it's based off the Smithsonian. Right. It's a very. You know, important part of, uh, DC in that area. Um, so I was very happy that that was in the game. Um, but yeah, it's like, and they left out some, like, a lot of other stuff. And maybe you can go to this, I, I guess I should say I, I haven't been there, I just discovered the location this morning. So it's possible I'm wrong here. But as of right now, all I got to was the White House, and you could see the White House, but it had a big gate in front of it. So to me, it, it almost seemed like you can't go to the White House. Again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll get in there and it's like, oh wait, you can go to the White House, and I'm just an idiot. But, at least my impressions right now are kind of like, well, you, you put the time to put the White House in here, but then now it's like, oh, but we can't go in there. And that's actually a frustrating thing for me with a lot of stuff in Fallout 3, is there's a lot of areas that I wanted to go to that are locked off. I think that that, plus the fact that the level cap is so low, plus some world building stuff that I don't like as much as New Vegas, is why it's not my favorite Fallout. I go back and forth. I think Fallout 3 is... Honestly, I do think it's a better video game than Fallout 4 just because of the lore and the story and the focus on it being an RPG and stuff. But I also think it's a worse game than than that game in different ways. Like it with could drop down, by the way, heads up. What? Like, there could be a big drop-off here, oh. so don't... Maybe don't. What's behind this? Um... Yeah, I just wanted to get the item. You're right, though. I'm, like, really scared right now. <laughs> I know. I'm taking a chance. Yeah, I guess that that's kind of my problem. I think the RPG elements, though, carry it above four for me because it feels very... Uh, what would you say? Um, rooted in what Fallout always was in the past. Right. But it's it is actively frustrating to me that you have... I would say a franchise that is so misguided with how it handles its elements. Like, for example, this franchise, it'll, like, always take a step forward and a step back at the same time, and I don't really understand why. You know, right. like, they're always introducing some new features or introducing something from Elder Scrolls or something like that that's really good, and then they're forgetting something from their past that people loved. And that actually really frustrates me. It's something I noticed with Fallout uh, 3 and 4 and, you know, New Vegas as well. I don't know. It's like I love those games, but I hate when they will... How, how would you even say it? Like, they will incorporate, like I said, new things, but then they'll forget old things that matter. And then sometimes they'll bring those old things back and sometimes they won't. And it kind of hits a point for you where you're, like, picking and choosing, well, I like this more about this Fallout, but I like this more about this Fallout, but I like this more about New Vegas. Yeah. And I wish that there was just a clear, definitive template. I mean, I would have gone with Fallout, uh, I don't know, New Vegas as the template for 4. Mm -hmm. They didn't really. It kind of seems like they were embarrassed that they didn't make it. I know some people disagree, but that's still kind of what I think about it. Um... But I don't know. I I just genuinely am disappointed and love that series. Like I, I'm so conflicted on it because it's it's got some of my favorite games ever in it and it's got 
some of my favorite worlds I've ever seen. Yeah. And then you'll like play a new game and you'll be expecting different things from the past. I'm like, no, sorry, we went a different direction. And it's like, how often are you going to go a different direction? I just don't understand why that series has such a hard time having an identity. It doesn't even stop there. Look at 76. Like That's probably the most glaring example of the game just randomly changing its identity you know, partway through the series into like, well, now we're multiplayer. Right. And you're kind of like, I'm not against multi... This is terrifying. You're basically like, I'm not against multiplayer, but why? Why are we multiplayer now? Right. Oh, my. Yeah, this thing's weird. 